listen to what he says in verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. But I said to you that you have seen me, and yet you do not believe. All of the Father gives me will come to me. And the one who comes to me, I will by no means cast out. For I have come down from heaven, not to do my own will, but the will of him who sent me. This is the will of the Father who sent me, that, that of all he has given me, I should lose nothing, but should raise it up in the last days. And this is the will of him who sent me, that everyone, listen, everyone who sees the Son and believes in him may have everlasting life, and I will raise him up at that last day. And he goes on and he talks about some things. He talks about the bread of life and, and eating in the bread of life. And uh, it seemed to be difficult. And later on in the chapter, the, the Jews began to argue amongst themselves. And then there were some that said, this is too hard for us. You're, what you're saying is too difficult. It, I, we, can't, we can't bear with this. And so it says here in verse 6, he says, Therefore many of the disciples, when they heard this, said, This is a hard saying. Who can stand it? Who can stand it? And when Jesus knew in himself, that his disciples complained about this. He said to them, does this offend you? What then if you should see the Son of Man ascend where he was before? It is the Spirit who gives life, and the flesh profits nothing. The words that I speak to you are spirit, and they are life. But there are some of you who do not believe. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were, who did not believe, and who would betray him. And he said, therefore, I have said uh, to you that no one can come to me unless it has been granted to him by my father. From that time, many of the disciples went back and walked with him no more. And then Jesus said to the twelve, do you also want to go away? Do you also want to go away? And then Simon Peter, he says, Lord, to whom shall we go? Where, who can we follow? Seeing that, listen, you are the son of the living God and you have the words of eternal life and we believe that, that and are sure that thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And he had the words of life because, you ready for this? He had the word of life because he was the word. Amen. What's in the name? They called him Jesus. They called him Savior. They called him Master. But when you call him the Word, you are once again reacquainting re him, reminding yourself that he was the one who was before anything existed. Amen? Amen. And so he never, listen, he didn't begin at Bethlehem. He didn't begin at the womb. He pre-existed. And not only that, but he is, he is perpetual. He didn't stop being the Word. Never did he stop, nor will he stop being the Word. When, not even when he died on the cross, he never stopped being the Word. He didn't stop being the Word when he was buried in the tomb. He was still the Word. He didn't stop being the Word when he rose from the dead. He didn't stop being the Word. He is still the Word. He was and always will be. Amen? Amen. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 22 says this, and to, to, to 28 says, by so much was Jesus made a surety of a better testament that they truly were many priests because they all they, they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But here it is in verse 24. But this man, because he continues ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood, wherefore he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, Seeing he ever lives to make intercessions for them. He is forever our high priest, and he will never change. For such a high priest came, became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from the sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily, as those high priests, to offer up sacrifice, first for his own sins and then for the people's. For he did Listen, for this he did once when he suffered and offered it up himself. For the law maketh men high priests, which have infirmity. But the word, say the word. The word. But the word of the oath, which was since the law, 
maketh the Son who is consecrated forevermore. He is the Word forevermore. He is our High Priest. Amen. Amen. That man Jesus, that man Jesus is still the only way. Amen. Somebody should be getting excited up in here. But I think you're so used to hearing the gospel, it's become old hat. I remember, uh, uh, matter of fact, I'll probably share the story, but I remember reading an article and this woman followed D.L. Moody around, followed him around for several months. And at the end of, this, of her following, uh, she got a chance to talk with D.L. Moody and she had a complaint. The complaint was, why did you preach the same message every place you went? Well, it's the gospel. It's the word. What other message should I preach? Amen. 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 Some of us were tired of it. Some of us we it's its own hat. Some of us we think we've got it down pat. Can I tell you none of us have it down pat? Mm -hmm. Amen. <clears throat> but this this Christ Jesus is the only way. In first Timothy chapter two, verse five, it says, For there is one God, one mediator between God and men. And who is that man? Jesus. Jesus Christ. The word of God will one day come back. And the king of kings, as the Lord of lords, he's coming to take his children home. Amen? In Revelation chapter 19, verse 11 through 16, it says, And I saw heaven opened, and, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon it was called Faithful, and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and on his head were many crowns, and he had a name written that no man knew but himself. Verse 13, it says, And he was clothed with a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. Amen. And the armies which were in heaven followed him upon the white horses, clothed in fine linen, white and clean. And out of the mouth goeth a sharp sword, that with it he should smite the nations, and he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And he treadeth the, the winepress of the fierceness of the wrath of Almighty God. And then in verse 16, and he hath on his vesture and on his thigh the name that is written, King of kings, Lord of lords. He never stopped being the word. He never will stop being the word. The word has become flesh and dwelt among us. Now the word is in us and brings us life. Now the word is in us and gives us help for today and hope for tomorrow. Amen. Amen. Let's worship. Sing a new song. 